Hello, I'm David Boyer, Danfoss Service Training Coordinator. I'm going to explain to you here how to do proper shielding of power and control wiring. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Shielding of power and control wiring. The reason uh, control signal wiring, we, the reason we shield it is to keep noise from getting in and interfering with the signal. For motor cables, on the other hand, they're shielded to keep noise from radiating out. Shielding of control wires, there will be three types of control signals. You've got your binary inputs or digital inputs. They're not as susceptible to noise. That's a signal that's either 24 volts DC or zero with um, at, at least a five volt tolerance and it doesn't switch quickly. Oftentimes shielding is, uh, you can get by without it, but with the analog signal, shielding becomes more important. Something from a sensor or transducer. Serial com, even more so. It's a low voltage switching signal that is more susceptible to noise and important to shield that noise out. These are uh, the types of signal cable that you'll see totally unshielded, oftentimes that's fine for your binary inputs. For analog signals, with the foil shield and the drain wire is usually good enough, but better still would be with the braided shield. Best would be both the braid and the foil. This is usually best for your serial com communications. Here's your typical uh, foil shield with the drain wire that we'll look at a little more closely here. Here is an example of a nicely done installation. It's got the braided shield. You peel off the outer jacket and bond that with the spring clamps right on the control card. What is good about this is it, you want a good 360 degree contact between that shield and your drive chassis. Same here, you, you might not be able to see, but that uh, outer jacket is stripped back. We're clamped onto the braided shield, and same here. Uh, this is really what you're going for. Now, notice here on the serial communication, you've got two wires landed, 68 and 69. That's your signal positive and signal negative, and there's nothing connected to 61 you do not want to connect your drain wire here. That's a common mistake. 61 is for a signal common. So if you had three wires coming from your controls, plus, minus, and a signal common, but do not land the shield or the drain there. It's also important to note that um, we're bonding the shield at the drive end only. The other end of this cable is left open. That's so that you don't get ground currents if there's a difference between ground potential between your drive and your control signals. Uh, you'll have current running through that shield and that'll actually make things worse. So only bond the shield at the drive end. Here's another fine example of shielding. Uh, when you got serial com using the decoupling plate, we, you strip back the shielding, you get a nice 360 degree contact between the shield and the drive chassis, and that's how you'd like that to look. Now for shielding of motor cables to do, reduce radiated noise, the motor cables radiate significant noise due to the high switching frequency of the inverter IGBTs. This is where most of the noise uh, is going to be coming from. If you're having noise problems, it's it's oftentimes from your motor cables. You want to separate those physically as much as you can from control wiring, line wiring, motor cables from multiple drives you, you want to separate as well. They can cross talk and induce voltage one to the other. At a minimum, your motor leads must be run in their own separate metallic conduit separate from line power and control power, so three separate metallic conduits. Optionally, you can use shielded VFD cable that will improve further from radiated noise. That's not required, 
but it's coming more and more common and let's look at how to uh, bond that motor cable shield here you've got your motor leads coming in three phase and earth you've got a physical connection wire between the drive and motor and then you peel back the outer jacket, expose the shield, and get that nice 360 degree contact between your cable shield and the drive chassis. And then of course bond the drive chassis to a good uh, solid earth connection. This is showing a wire here which is okay but better still you'll make that connection with a braided cable. The reason being that uh, the small stranded wires in the braid have a lower impedance to high frequency and it'll get you better performance. This is the illustration out of the instruction manual showing a nice installation. You've got separate conduits for incoming power and motor lead. You've got uh, the outer jacket of the motor cable removed exposing the shield the nice 360 degree contact between the shield and the drive chassis, ground wire also between drive and motor, uh, incoming power with its own ground connected, and then you'll ground this all uh, to your building ground. So that's shielding of motor cables and control cables. Thanks for listening. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.